as we drive along here, I think an issue is that for you, we've got so much land out here. This is really bad. Uh, last year was bad, but it, didn't, it just kind of developed later on. And we had a little bit of a running head start last year to have a draft. This year has been dry uh, from May through June and now into July, and there's just no grass. Uh, the cows have been eating it as fast as it's grown, and it hasn't grown very fast because it hasn't rained very much. And a lot of it's burning up now and almost dead. And that's our biggest problem is that one thing to get hot and dry is another thing to not have enough grass to go around for the cattle and crawl the livestock. Well, and then the other thing you just mentioned is, you know, you have to have farm equipment out here. That's got to be a concern for spark. Well, it's terrible. When you put up hay, uh, you, you have to have uh, just about every every piece of equipment has to have some type of uh, fire suppression or signature or something like that because it wouldn't take much to start a fire right now any place around Tulsa, especially the south side of Bogey County, uh, Creek County. This is all just, we just haven't had any rain. Yeah, all right, we know it's bad. It, it was bad last year. There's some cumulative effect from this. Is that, yeah, I know it rained between last year and this year, but did it hurt any from last year? Yeah, because you, we, it, again, it kind of almost like the running head start thing. Uh, we had the ponds that were low. Now, some of them never uh, ran over uh, and filled up. And so that's what we're running into right now is the fact that there is absolutely no no extra water. And I'm thinking about a pond where there's I'm out of water. I have to start trucking in water for these cattle or I have to move them somewhere. They're all trying to find something, but it's almost like a lawnmower that's pretty much mowed this down. Usually this would be knee deep and it looks basically like uh, a lawnmower has come through here and just taken it off. There's nothing left. Yeah, and I know, I mean, I was raised on a farm, so I know, I mean, they're going to eat enough as it is. You can't necessarily come out here and, you know, water the dog on pasture, so how much rain is it going to take before this gets back to taller? Well, you'd need probably a minimum uh, three to five inch soaking rain. There's no subsoil moisture now, and that's what was helping us out because in uh, April, kind of March, April, we ended up with pretty good rain, and that kind of helped us uh, to survive. That's why there's still a little bit of green tinge to some of this Bermuda, but it stopped growing uh, a couple of weeks ago, and now it's just getting ready to all burn up. Yeah. The ponds here, I mean, just take a look at this. Yeah, and that's what people don't understand is that Bermuda is not necessarily dead, it's dormant, but even when it's green, when it's like this, it's not growing. No, it's not. And uh, we're starting to, uh, you know, some folks in the city will kind of realize, you know, that their grass doesn't seem to be growing well. But, I mean, the ponds are just in the verge. It's getting that, it's pretty much getting the green algae, that, uh, the nasty algae. I've got cattle in there. This is the last farm pond we have, and there's water's just about out of it. I mean, here we are in Tulsa County. We're not talking about someplace else. And... Uh, Cattle are just trying, they go in there and try to stay cool and wet, so we've got to do something. But, and the algae is not necessarily a problem for them, I know, but it, it can get to the point stagnant wise where it's not doing it. Right. I mean, this isn't real, I mean, they have four stomachs. The cattle, the cow has four stomachs, so they can handle a lot more than, say, a horse. Of course, you have to pretty much keep clean water going. Uh, so the cattle are a little bit more, are less susceptible to, to illness based on this type of water. But still, uh, you want healthy water because I've got a bunch of mamas and babies out here and they need to they need to be as healthy as possible. And when we're looking at your water line is down probably, what, 10, 12 feet? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it never was able to fill up this year because we never had one of the uh, big flooding rain. Usually you need a flooding rain sometime in April or May for some of these ponds to, to stay high through the uh, summer season. Because, you know, naturally July and August are hot and dry. That's not the surprise. All right, and you've got problems that are multiplied by this. The average person at home with their lawn, they're looking at that thinking, oh, it's ground, that's too bad. But what kind of a burden is this on people who are doing, I mean, you've got two different jobs, obviously. <laughs> yeah. There are guys who do this for a living. How big a burden is it for them? I don't know how they can really do it, uh, you know, full time. That's one of the reasons why I left my family farm in Nebraska was because of situations like this. It's, there's so many ups and there's so many downs.